Hey folks, Viewy here. The fixes we are covering in today's video should help resolve a number of the common modern EverQuest titanium issues you may be running into. These include the game freezing, crashing the desktop, and the screen going black. Before we begin, I wanted to let you know that these fixes are performed within Windows 10. Windows 11 and 7 fixes should be similar. If you're using something older, I can't be certain any of these are going to be available to you. Additionally, I want to say that this is a community-run game. Bugs and issues that pop up like warts on an aging game such as this are inevitable. Please do not take your frustrations out on the community or those who host the game. Right, let's get into it. Step 1. Set compatibility and administration mode inside of EverQuest. To start, you're going to go into your EverQuest install directory. You're going to scroll down until you find eqgame.exe. Right click there, select properties. Then select the compatibility tab. From there, under compatibility mode, we want to make sure that we check run this program in compatibility mode 4 and select Windows XP Service Pack 2. Then below that, you're going to select run this program as an administrator. Hit apply or OK. And that's it. That's step one. Step two, we're going to tell EverQuest to use only a single core. In this day and age, if you've had a computer upgrade in the last 15 years, you're probably rocking anywhere from two to 16 cores. And this causes a bit of a headache for EverQuest. So we want to find a way to tell it to only use one core. And before you sweat, don't worry. Everything that's pretty much been made in the last 15 years can run EverQuest, no problems. So to start, we're going to have you open up a web browser and you're going to click the link below to Players Technical Affinity. This is an article that's on Project 1999, and it talks about how to create a batch file that tells EverQuest to use only a single random core on your processor. And this is a nice little consideration. You can go in in different ways and tell EverQuest, okay, you just use the first core on your chip. But when you do that, you you kind of tell the processor to put a heavy burden on one core and modern processors are designed to constantly be shifting that so that you never get in a situation where you're kind of running one too ragged so this does a bit of a happy middle ground where every time you start everquest it's going to choose a random uh core on your processor and take a little bit of the, the weight off of that specific one. Um, so from there, what you're going to want to do is you're going to right click on your desktop. You're going to uh, choose new text document and you can set this to whatever you want. What I like to do is just go ahead and double click to open it. Click on file, save as make sure that you set this to all files do not keep it as uh, txt it will not read properly and then in the title um, the recommendation from the page is to set it as a run everquest.bat i'm going to simplify that and just do a run eq and then you're going to type that tot, uh, dot bat hit save and now you'll see it's no longer showing up as a text document, but as this batch file icon. That means you've set that up properly. And what we're going to do is then copy everything from this echo down to this end local, paste that into our document, and then we're going to find our EverQuest directory again because we have to make a couple of changes real quick. The first is that we need to tell the game or the batch file where to find uh, our EverQuest folder. A quick way to do that is when you're inside the directory, if you click here in the address bar, you can see it gives us the directory there. We can copy that. We then come over to the document, go to set 
underscore app folder and then put that new directory in there. And then there is one more thing we need to update. And that is we have to know exactly how many processors we have. So what you're going to do is press Control Alt Delete and open up your task manager. Select the performance tab and under the CPU section, you'll see that it shows us what the cores of our processor right there. So whatever number you have right here, you're going to plug that into set forward slash a underscore max CPU. And I have eight, so that's good. And that is the last step we have to take for adjusting this file. So you're gonna hit control S to save that. You can close there. You can close your task manager. Then what you're going to want to do is drag that bat file into your EverQuest fo uh, folder. With this in, what we want to do is we want to use this to create a shortcut. And we're going to bring that onto our desktop because this is what we will use from here on out to open the game. This replaces our launch titanium. And you'll see it'll work just like it did before. You're not going to notice any difference. Uh, but you'll just want to make sure that it works. And if for some reason you're receiving an error, you can always go back and try these steps again. And if you find that you are just too frustrated and you don't want to deal with it, you should be able to go back to your launch titanium and everything will be just like it was before we started the video. All right, we're on step three. We're going to get DG Voodoo 2 installed. And man, that is quite the tongue twister. Seriously, try saying that super fast. It is a pain. What DG Voodoo 2 does is creates a bit of a bridge between older versions of DirectX and allows them to better communicate with the uh, more advanced versions that we're running in this day and age. Uh, this oftentimes helps with screen flickering, slowness, crashes, and it's, it's a good solution. Now, if you are using Win EQ2 right now, be aware you do not want to install this. Uh, people report a significant number of issues. Uh, I highly recommend at this point, if you, you want to follow these steps, if you're having issues, highly recommend checking out my video on borderless gaming and maybe using that in conjunction with these things to resolve that issue. Uh, but just wanted to let you know before you put the time in, I don't want you to break anything and get frustrated. So with that said, we're going to open our web browser. You're going to find the link below for uh, Deej's stuff. Uh, you're going to come to this site, find under latest stable version, the most recent DG Voodoo. You're going to click that to download, and that should be relatively quick. Once we have that, we're going to, on our desktop, create a new folder, type in whatever you want it to be, we're going to open the zip file, pull all the uh, pieces and drag that into our folder. We are then going to double click into that. And we're going to open up our EverQuest directory. Oops. Okay. So. At this point, what you want to do, and you're going to see it's going to ask me to replace it because I've already got it in there, but I want to walk you through it. So uh, you're going to click that. You're going to drop it into your directory, replace this file. Then you're going to select the MS folder, click on the x86, select all of these files and drop those into the directory as well. Yes, I would like to replace those. Then 
In your EverQuest folder, you're going to find that DG Voodoo CPL. Double click on it. It's going to ask you, because it, uh, again, a bit of a warning. I have ran this through my, my virus software. Everything comes up clean. Lots of people are using this. I haven't seen anything, you know, dastardly come up about it. So I'm going to say it's okay. But again, grain of salt. I'm a dude on the internet. You know, trust me or not, but don't trust me. So anyways, we're going to click more info. We're going to hit run anyways. Okay. Future Neely here. Uh, I've missed a step when configuring the DG Voodoo CPL. And thanks to Project 1999 forum user McCoy for uh, pointing this out. I want to get that corrected for you. So what you're going to do is in your DG Voodoo CPL control panel here, you are going to make sure to click this dot backslash which is going to capture the uh, the directory that the app is actually running in. And then we'll get you back to your regularly scheduled program. We are going to make a couple of quick changes here. So one, if you intend to run this in windowed, make sure you've got this set to windowed. You don't need to check any of these except for the adapter to use enable. You're going to want to select your current graphics card. You're then going to slide over to DirectX. Uh, set this to something reasonable. Um, I have it at uh, 1024 because my graphics card can handle that. If for some reason you have an older card, you might want to drop that down. Um, but you'll need to figure out what actually uh, the VRAM is for your graphics card. Then there's this little checkbox that will likely be active on yours, and that is DG Voodoo Watermark. If you leave this on, you're going to see a DG Voodoo active or a watermark on the bottom right of your screen. Uh, personally, I don't need that, but if you want that bling to remind you, go for it. But if that's, uh, if that's all good, hit apply, hit OK, and that's it. At this point, you can open up EverQuest and get to playing. If, uh, if you guys have any other fixes, recommendations that you have um, to try and make life easier on the community, please feel free to uh add those in the comments below you can reach me over on the p99 forums again gonna keep putting out these videos i really hope to see new faces in norad and uh as usual thanks for watching oh also i have subscribers uh honestly i know that i don't have many but for those that may still be watching you guys rock i uh, am tickled to death that i have people following and uh means a lot so thanks folks hope you're having a good one